In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to use the eel library created by Chris Knott for Python. Eel is a little Python library for making simple electron-like HTML and JavaScript GUI applications, which was ideal for when I was developing AutoPy.exe. To use eel, you'll need to install the library by simply calling python-m pip install eel in cmd. I'm installing eel 0.9.7 as the current version isn't working with IDLE. If you do not expect to use IDLE, then install it without the version. Make sure no errors occurred by looking at the output for the success message. Although this example will be displaying the use of Chrome's app mode, you do not actually need Chrome. When starting the app, if you do not have Chrome, you'll be asked what to open to display the web page. I do however highly recommend that you have Chrome for this tutorial for the simplicity. First you'll want to create a file structure for the project. Create a new folder and name it whatever you want. In this folder, create a blank app.py file and a folder named web. In the folder you just created called web, create a blank HTML file called main.html. To make sure everything is currently going smoothly, create a small test application using app.py. Import eel, declare its root folder we created before, and call start passing main.html. We don't have to pass web slash main.html as the server's root is now the folder web declared in the initialization. Save and run this file. A Chrome window in app mode will appear and render main.html. Chrome's app mode is the same as Chrome with the URL and bookmarks bar hidden. Currently the start method blocks to keep the server running, but to stop this we can simply add block equals false in the start method. This now allows us to execute data after the start method. Do make sure that you keep the script running though because as soon as it falls off the end the server will no longer be running. You can simply fix this with a while loop and eel.sleep to decrease CPU usage. Do not use time.sleep as it will cause issues with timing in the script. The biggest part of this library is that it allows for communication between Python and JavaScript running in the Chrome window. I'll set up a basic HTML file layout with some text in it. In the header I'll also add eel.js which will allow for the communication between Python and JavaScript. Now when I run app.py, I should see the text. To make a Python function that you can call from JavaScript, decorate it with at eel.expose. Now when you call eel.mypython method with hello and world as the arguments in JavaScript using the Chrome console, Python will print hello world. This proves that the code is executed in the Python instance, not the Chrome window. To make a JavaScript function that you can call from Python, Wrap the function name in eel.expose before creating it. To call the JavaScript method, I'll use a non-blocking start method so I can call the method after dot start. Putting eel.myJavaScript function that passes two arguments after the eel.start method in Python, I then run the script and it will print hello world in the browser's console. This shows that the code was executed in JavaScript by calling the method in Python. Even though it might seem like Python and JavaScript are working together, there is still a barrier between them as they are running in different processes. EL supports two methods to return values, callbacks and synchronous returns. It's also good to note that passing complex objects between Python and JavaScript may not be possible due to the functions, moving data and the compatibility of the two languages. For example, you can't pass an instance of a class from Python to JavaScript. Callbacks allow us to execute a function with the data returned as the argument. When data is returned, the function will be called and then the return value will be passed as a parameter to the function. This method works both ways. If I wanted to use a callback in Python, I would create my method in JavaScript that is exposed using eel, which returns a value. Now in Python, I need to create my callback method and pass the callback method when calling the JavaScript method from Python. This example will call js what year in JavaScript and will pass the return value to print return in Python. You can also do this in JavaScript the other way around. Create a method you want to call in Python and expose it to eel. Now in JavaScript, create the callback method and then pass the callback method when calling the Python method from JavaScript. This example will call pi what year in Python and will pass a return value to print return in JavaScript. When calling a JavaScript function from Python, we can get the return value directly using a double pair of brackets. For example, when I call the js what year function, I can wait for it using double brackets. This must be called after eel.start as the server needs to be running. Calling a Python function with a return value from JavaScript is a bit harder due to the delay of moving data. 
Simply making a function async and then using await will fix this though. This will allow us to wait for the value to be returned from the server. If you leave out await, you'll be given a promise object, which will only be given the actual value of the return when the data is returned, which will be a lot later due to the speed of transferring the data. If you go to my article on this video in the description, I also describe how to create threads in EEL and provide a simple example. Also go to the article for the code and more information on this repo.